Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Right here we have the Apple Watch SE, and much like the iPhone SE from 2020, this phone doesn't have any super exciting feature that really makes it stand out, and yet it might be the best purchase for the everyday person. Most people out there looking to buy a smartwatch, this might be the one to buy in 2020. There's a lot of really good stuff about this watch, but there's also a couple things you wanna be aware of, what was cut out, what's not included in this watch, and what this watch is incapable of doing. So we definitely have a lot to talk about in this video, but I wanna start off with the physical aspects of this watch. The first thing to note is that this one comes in two sizes that are exactly the same sizes as every other Apple Watch between the four, the five, and the six. And that means if you buy this one, nobody's gonna know that you saved almost $150 on the SE version because it's going to look so similar to the flagship Apple Watch 6. Now, there are a couple colors, but they're all going to come in aluminum. So if you're looking for a more premium material, you would have to buy the Apple Watch 6, but I think aluminum is really not a big deal. When you're looking at this watch, it's a classic rectilinear Apple design. Now on the right side, we have our little digital crown. As you spin that, you can navigate throughout the watch interface. Uh, it also acts as a button. That is your back button, your home button, your menu button. Uh, it does all of those depending on where you are. And I'll show you the interface later on in the video. And then below that on the right side, we have a microphone. And below that, we actually have a button that is going to, again, I'll show you this later on in the video, but it does things like open up the apps that you have available. And if you, you can also control the power menu and things like that. Now on the left side of this watch, we have a speaker and I will test the speaker out later on in the video, along with a lot of other things, I'll test out the accuracy of the heart rate and the GPS and everything this watch is capable of doing. But speaking of heart rate, if you flip it over, you'll see on the back, we have our heart rate diodes there. So it is able to measure your heart rate for workouts and stuff like that. Uh, but it does not have blood oxygen, nor does it have an ECG, which I know for most people, the ECG is really not an issue. Uh, I think that's really going to be something for people over the age of maybe 50 or anybody who has heart disease in their family. So maybe you wanna get the watch six in that situation. But I think a lot of people like myself are a little bit less concerned about getting an ECG on a watch. Now, the blood oxygen is a little bit of a drawback because that's something the watch could use uh, for some more advanced fitness tracking, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. So this watch has 32 gigabytes of storage on board, which is great for lots of apps, for lots of uh, saving music on here, podcasts, photos, whatever you wanna do, you're really not limited by the storage that you might be on some other competitive watches. So now this watch has Bluetooth to connect to earbuds or to your phone. It also has Wi-Fi, it has GPS, for tracking workouts. Uh, it has NFC for making payments with Apple Pay, and you could get the LTE version. This one right here is just the GPS version, so no LTE on this one, which means that I can still field phone calls and text messages and stuff like that, as long as I'm connected to my phone by Bluetooth. And then really the last thing to note about this physically is the water resistance is good for up to 50 meters. So if you're going surfing or swimming or whatever you're doing, this watch should have absolutely no problem. Now, before I get into the features and the operating system of this watch, which is really the bread and butter of the Apple Watch, is what it does so well, I first wanna go into some testing to see how accurate and capable this watch actually is. All right, so I just went for a quick run. You can see right here, 2.4 miles. You can see that on the watch as well, if you go to the activity app. And you can see most of the analytics down here, but I really prefer to see this on the phone. So if I go over to Outdoor Run, you can see I ran for 2.4 miles. It shows me the elevation change. And the heart rate right here was actually really accurate. You can see I did some intervals and it really did a great job of capturing each interval. Uh, it went up to the maximum, settled down very quickly. Uh, and likewise, it was very accurate in the consistent running in the beginning over there. Now, if we look at a map, you can see right here, there was almost no drunk wandering. It did an excellent job of tracking that. So the GPS was very accurate as well. Uh, and so overall, the accuracy of this when you're tracking workouts is definitely really good. All right, so this is what the Apple Watch SE microphone sounds like if you're on a phone call. I'm talking at a normal volume, holding the watch at a normal distance away. Uh, so comment down below and let me know how you think this sounds. All right, so this is just a speaker test on the Apple Watch SE to see how good it sounds if you're on a phone call. I'm just on another phone right now, so comment down below and let me know if you can hear what I'm saying. So when you get this watch, there's a couple apps you really want to use on your phone. The first one, of course, is the watch app. It's how you set it up and everything. And you have a couple options on the bottom. The first one is my watch, where you can change almost every setting about this watch. Uh, there's really a lot you can do here. Of course, you can do a lot of it within the watch as well, but controlling it from your phone is usually easier on a larger screen. We have the face gallery. You can pick some really wild ones here, like the artist ones down here, for example. Tons of watch faces to choose from. 
And then Discover, of course, over here has some other stuff as well. Now, the other app you'll be using is going to be the fitness app right here. Now, the fitness app, I will admit, is not my favorite fitness app out there. I think a lot of other uh, watches, for example, Garmin, I think they have a much better one when you're trying to decipher your fitness analytics. So just to give a quick interface tour for any first time Apple Watch buyers, we have our watch face and you can swipe through them here. Uh, and so we have a couple different watch faces. We can also tap and hold it to go and customize them and change which ones we want to have, get some other ones. If we press the crown, it brings us back to the home screen here. If we swipe down from the top, we have our notifications. And if we swipe up from the bottom, we have our quick access toolbar, which allows us to see like the battery. We can find our phone. We can go into walkie talkie mode, theater mode, uh, night mode, uh, things like that, airplane mode, lots of different options here. And of course, getting rid of water as well or water mode there. Then, of course, if we press on the crown again, it goes into our overall interface here where we have all of our different apps. So we can swipe around and see the different apps we have. There's tons of different features on this watch. Uh, so you have lots of cool things like workout tracking, a compass, a decibel meter with ear damage warnings, voice recording, br you know, breathing exercises, maps, period tracking, remote camera, uh, lots of stuff like that. You know, you have tons of things on this watch, including messages and phone calls, which I said you can only do on this one if you have it connected to your watch or to your phone. So if we zoom back in, we can go and open up any one of these. So email, for example, or we can go into Apple Pay. Let's just go into Memoji for this one. I don't think my Memoji really looks like me that much. Uh, I, I need to work on that, but you guys get the idea. That's how you can do stuff. And of course, scrolling around with this, with this little digital crown here, pressing it to go back. So if you press the crown, you go back to your app drawer and you can go around and see all the different apps you have. And then whenever you are done with this, you can actually do a couple things. So pressing it goes back to your watch face, or you can press and hold it to summon Siri. Another cool thing about this watch is if you just lift it up to your mouth and start talking, Siri does listen to you and it's a really cool way you can access that. Now the bottom button I showed you on the right side here, if you press it once, uh, it'll actually go into your app, like all the apps you have open so you can see all the different ones you have. And if you press and hold it, it actually goes into your power settings or your emergency SOS. And if you double press it, it opens up Apple Pay. I'm not gonna do that right now, uh, but you can easily pay with this watch. You do have a pin that you have to type in when you first put it on, and then it detects when it's on or off your wrist and requires you to retype it in when you put it back on your wrist. So now let's get into the pros and cons of the Apple Watch SE to figure out who this watch is actually for. And I wanna start off with the pros the first one, of course, is the interface and the integration. So if you are using the Apple ecosystem, you probably already know just how well everything integrates. And I've used a lot of other watches, Sunto, Garmin, I've used Google Wear OS watches, I've used pretty much every watch out there. And by far, the best one with the interface is going to be the Apple Watch. It just integrates so well with your iPhone. It has so many features that are just really, really well made for this watch. And a lot of the apps out there are very tailored to this as well. So the interface, of course, is going to be great. The ecosystem is great. And the chipset on here is very powerful. That's a big plus as well, uh, because it's not quite as powerful as the Apple Watch 6, but it is still very powerful. So you should have no problem with speed. 32 gigabytes on board means you can store tons of music and podcasts and anything you want to do. So if you're going for a run offline, you can easily listen to hours and hours of music. Of course, the limitation there is going to be your battery life. So overall, this is a really great watch, but it does come with a few drawbacks that you want to be aware of. The first one is actually, like I said, this watch does not have ECG or blood oxygen capability. So if that's important to you, this is probably not the watch for you. Now, a kind of small drawback here, I would recommend getting a case for this because if you look at it, kind of like uh, the Galaxy Watch Active 2, for example, uh, the face is the outermost plane. So you don't have any kind of bezel sticking up around it to protect the screen, which means if you're rock climbing or doing anything more intense, it is likely that you would scratch the screen. So I definitely recommend getting some kind of plastic cover or case to protect your watch. So a few other kind of minor drawbacks with this watch. One of them is that it doesn't have an always on display. The Apple Watch 6 does, this one does not. And being that you have sleep analytics on here, you might wanna be tracking your sleep, which means at some point in the day, probably every day, you'll have to find 60 to 90 minutes to charge this back up because the battery life, from my experience, only lasts about a day and a half. So reasonable, but definitely not that impressive. So guys, in conclusion, the Apple Watch SE is a fantastic watch. I highly recommend it to the vast majority of people out there who have an iPhone and are looking for an everyday watch to track your workouts, to track your health, uh, to have notifications, and just be more productive on a day-to-day -day basis. It really is an excellent watch in that aspect. Now, there are a few people that this watch, I, I really wouldn't recommend them to. Uh, so first of all, anybody who's wearing a suit and really trying to dress up and look fancy, 
obviously it's kind of a plain design here. I would probably recommend some other watches out there that would look a little bit better. Uh, secondly, anybody who is looking for a really long battery life, if you really want to just, if you just hate charging it, or if you plan on really going off the grid, there are other watches that I would recommend ahead of this one. One and a half day battery is not especially impressive. And then lastly, anybody who's really trying to go into some intense analytics on their workouts, if they're trying to train for something more intense than just your everyday runner, right? If you're trying to do a triathlon or stuff like that, this might not be the best watch for you, but it definitely can get the job done, don't get me wrong. But of course, there are some better ones that are more durable and more capable out there. So guys, that's what I have to say about the Apple Watch SE. It's very impressive. I highly recommend it to the vast majority of people out there looking to buy a watch in 2020. Of course, I will be comparing it to the Apple Watch 6 as soon as I get that. So make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so you don't miss that video and comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Apple Watch SE. Any questions you have about it, if you plan on buying it or not. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.